Yo, let's, let's do this. It's time for colors. Bob Ross said, I had a man come to me and he said, Bob, I could never paint because I'm colorblind. So I thought today we do a picture in gray just to show you that anyone can paint. This, my friends, is why we started with value first. Value is more important than color because if you can't see it, it isn't there. So, Phil, what do you see if you don't see in color? You see that flag on the very, very bottom? Yeah, in the middle? That's what you see. You don't see a lot there, do you? Your eye is a miracle of nature. It's one of the most complex organisms on your body. Light comes in and the receptors in the back of your eye enable you to notice things like the different frequencies of light and different colors. There are two different types of receptors in your eyes. Those are called cones and rods. The cones allow you to perceive RGB, which is red, green, and blue. These are the primary colors of white light, which means light from the sun. The rods in your eye allow you to perceive the frequencies of light in dark. Rods work best in the dim of light of night. This is why you don't see much color in the dark. Well, Farrell, is there a biological difference between how men and women might perceive color? Well, there might be. Color blindness affects 1 in 13 men and 1 in 300 women. The most common form of color blindness is red and green. So what most people see might be very different from what people see who are colorblind. Here's an example of being able to see the full color spectrum versus being completely colorblind or being red, green, weak, or blue, yellow, weak. But if you're worried about being colorblind, don't. Your dog is. Well, not fully colorblind. They're, they're, they're called deutronopes. They see in diachromatic, which means they can't distinguish between red, orange, yellow, and green. But trust me, dogs make up for it with their nose. Yeah, but you know who else is colorblind? Bulls. And that's no bull. See, when you see these movies and cartoons where the matador is flailing around that red flag, who's it for? People. I know what you're thinking. People. Yeah, it's for us. It's one of the reasons why Ferraris are red. It grabs our attention. Bull could care less. He just doesn't like something being flailed in his face. But why red? Because red equals fire, passion, love. And don't feel bad if you're colorblind. Emerson Moser, Crayola senior crown maker, was colorblind. And who else is colorblind? This guy, right here. And who is he? Peter DeSiv, creator of Ice Age, worked on Zootopia, Hop, Robots, Finding Nemo, Monsters, Inc., Mulan, and etc., and so on, and so on, and so on. This guy is one of the top artists in industry right now, and he's 100% colorblind. Why, this sketch should look pretty familiar to you, because this sketch became this creature right here. They call me Bruce. Peter's work is fun, energetic, full of gesture and life, but also he's able to use color even though he can't see it. In fact, I'd argue he could use color better than most people who are not colorblind. Just as an aside, this is one of my favorite uh, Peter DeSiv illustrations. Uh, this was done in response to 9-11, where he's showing um, children dressing up as their heroes, because that's what kids do on Halloween. They dress up as heroes, and he drew them as dressing up as firefighters and policemen because they were the heroes of 9-11. Well, considering our current circumstances, who would be the heroes that kids would dress up as now? Doctors, nurses, um, grocery store workers, delivery people, something to think about. One of the things I really want you to pay attention to is the sensitivity of light and dark and color. Uh, obviously, this is in the evening. How can we tell? We look at the colors on the right. 
um, and you can look at the light on the porch. Why else would that be up so lit if it was not at night? And look how the color is being affected in that area versus the other area. This is one of the reasons why value is so important and pay attention to our reference to see how those areas are actually affected. Now, this is really tricky color stuff that a 100% colorblind guy is doing. And the secret sauce to his being able to do this goes back to something we've been talking about all year. We've been talking about process. He uses thumbnails and he does color studies, aka so should you be. There is no finished image on the right without the image on the left first being a thumbnail. Notice in this drawing on the left, he's nailed exactly where the light sources are going to be. He's got the value down before he ever applies the color, which we see so brilliantly done on the right. Again, I have to keep reminding myself, it's like pinching yourself in a dream. Yes, he's 100% colorblind. Oh, I give up. How does he do this? Farrell, explain this to me. Okay. He's thinking of color as a value. Wait, what? Color can be a value? Yeah. If yellow was converted into black and white, what value would it be? Maybe a two? And this is precisely why red and green color blindness is so common. Because red on a value spectrum is a five. Get it? If yellow is a two, red's a five. Guess what green is? It's also a five, which would mean blue would probably be a seven and purple would be like an eight or a nine. See, you gotta think of it as numbers. Where do you think the whole concept of paint by numbers came from? Well, let's go back here. How do the eyes actually see color? It's because of value. You see, the light hits an object, right? And that light bounces back in your eye. That's how you see colors, is that the light is traveling as information everywhere. Turn off the lights, you don't see anything. Somebody turn the lights on, please. Somebody, please. I just need some light. So again, how we see color has to do with what happens when light hits a surface. White light, which means it's coming from the sun, hits an object. That object absorbs all those colors but one, and that's the one that hits right back at your eye. That's why a ladybug here looks red. This green leaf is absorbing every other color but green, and that's what's hitting your eye. That's why the leaf looks green. And we've talked about your eyes absorbing light before. We talked about the pupils. The pupils get small or large depending on the amount of light and also the emotion they're trying to portray, right? The more wider your pupils are, the more light they're allowing in, which means the more information they're trying to take in. It's like when your parents flip on the light switch and you go, ah, because you're still asleep and the light comes pouring in, your pupils were huge. Also, when you're in love, I love you, your pupils get big. There are three basic things that you need to be able to describe when talking about a color. First of all, it's hue. The hue is the name of a color. So if I go, boy, it's a blue sky out there, I'm talking about the name, which is the hue, right? Saturation is the amount or density of a color. If I'm putting a lot down, I'm really saturating it. If I'm not putting a lot down, then I'm not saturating it very much, which means I haven't put a lot of density of color. There's not a lot there. And value, well, we've already discussed that at length. As we go forward, this is your basic color wheel. We'll discuss this um, and talk about why it's so critical. But you can see things like how yellow is the opposite of violet or orange is the opposite of blue. And these will have a lot of meaning as we develop our understanding of color theory. And what this simply is, is a color wheel with value. There are two different primary ways that we see color. One is in the physical world, and one is in the world of light. The physical world is called CMYK, and the light world is called RGB. RGB stands for red, green, and blue. These are the primary colors of light. If I was on a stage and I had a red light, a green light, and a blue light, and I pointed them all together, it would form actually a white light. In light, the combination of all color equals white, which 
which is why white really isn't a color. It's a combination of all colors or an absence of all colors. Your phone screens are RGB. As are your finicky televisions, those are also RGB. CMYK is in the physical world. All matter is in this color spectrum. Something that you could hold in your hand, for example, would be CMYK. But my phone is in my hand. Well, your phone is in your hand, but the screen is emitting RGB. But the phone itself would be CMYK. CMYK stands for cyan, which is a kind of blue, but not quite. Uh, magenta, which is a kind of red, but not exactly. Yellow, which is definitely yellow. And the combination of all those equals black. So black really isn't a color either. It is either the combination of all the colors in the physical world or the absence of color in the world of light. Paint is CMYK. Anything that you print is CMYK. Your color pencils are CMYK. If you took all your color pencils and combined them together, you're going to get a black or something very close to black. Because you see, black is the combination of all color. Or in the world of light, the absence of it. That's why black really isn't a color. It's more of a temperature. And I'd like to remind you, this isn't the first time we've talked about color. Colors give us all sorts of different types of information. We, we've talked about this before, about certain colors are warning us. Certain colors equal optimism and friendliness and excitement and creativity and trust. They may create a sense of peacefulness and balance. Companies use color all the time. Remember we said that most companies' logos use one to two colors because colors convey emotion. So thank you for joining me for our introduction to color. Next time, we'll be discussing things like primary colors and secondary colors and tertiary colors. We'll even talk about analogous colors. And again, the difference between warm and cool, how temperature affects color and conveys really important information for our viewers. I'm Bill Farrell, and this has been a Brain River High School art production.